have you had any train nightmares you'd like to tell us about? If so, then go to our website, bbc.co.uk slash inside out. First, though, we're off to a very unusual type of school. Have you ever wondered where they train all the bodyguards who look after the rich, the famous and the powerful? Well, as Mark Hoburn discovered, many of them learn their skills in the heart of Shropshire. So he headed out there to sign up for a week. Netley Hall, fishing lakes, landscape lawns, chocolate box cottages. Could there be a more tranquil place? Well, appearances can be deceptive. Keep stabbing him, keep stabbing him. Keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going. Hold that knife. If you don't stop him there, you are going to be killed with this bat. Welcome to the bodyguard school. Being a bodyguard was something I was really considering. Having competed in Last Man Standing, there was a close protection guy who was with us at all times, looking after us, really. And watching what he did and his job description seemed like a great challenge. It seemed like something that I would really love doing. Mark Hoban fought his way around the world in the TV show Last Man Standing. He's a kickboxer, fitness instructor, dance teacher, and he's always looking for a new challenge. So Mark's on his way to Netley Hall. He wants to know if he's got what it takes to be a bodyguard. It's going to be interesting. There's going to be things that I haven't done before, which is good, and that is the challenge in itself. So hopefully, fingers crossed, it'll be like a, a duck to water, but I'm sure it might turn out a bit different. Bodyguards are in high demand these days. Some are government agents, but many others work for private security firms, and that's a booming industry. So what does it take to get on in this business? What we look for, certainly in our students in the early stages of the training, is that they've got the uh, ability to be able to project themselves in a professional manner. Um, and with that comes the normal protocols, as we call them, with regards to etiquette, being able to communicate with people, especially with the principles that they'll be looking for. Yeah. Um, and generally being well turned out as well. Reasonably fit, we're not looking for supermen or anything. Um, but um, if they've got all them attributes, and then we can install into them the skills that they're going to require to carry out the jobs as a course protection operative. First up, a bit of a workout in the sports hall. Half time, half time, better. OK, because I'm a nice bloke, I'm going to give you 40 seconds rest instead of it's 30. It's tough, even for Mark, who's no stranger to the gym. So please, please make me feel better and tell me that you found that as tough as that I did. That was tough. It was, it was very tough. Brett Smith runs a security firm in the Midlands. So why is he putting himself through this? Why does he want to be a bodyguard? It's just the, the amount of, of situations you're going to get into. Yeah. You're going to find yourself at a stately home, just probably standing there doing nothing, being mm. bored, and then you might find you're on the front line mm. going with somebody, some celebrity. Yeah. How do you feel about putting yourself in a dangerous situation? You yeah. might go through life fine, if you know, if you're lucky. If, you're lucky. if not, then, you know, <laughs> you have to obviously go into a situation where instinct takes over, mm. and, you know, you might get a shot, you might not. Yeah, sure. OK, just move around to the eye. Once your thumb's down the eye, Stick it in, pull out. These are techniques that are very, very serious. If your life's in danger, you then use them, OK, under no circumstances any other time. But Brett may be relaxed, but the truth is bodyguarding can be dangerous. You must defend your principal, the person you're paid to protect, at any cost, but without breaking the law. looks good, take it out of your mind. Forget all the films you've ever watched. Reality is scruffy, OK? No, stop there for me, I told you. Stop there, please, sir, stop there. So it could get nasty. Mark's got to show he knows how to look after himself and his principal. I've already got bruises, hand bruises, I've got rib bruises, and I think a lot of the others have as well, so it was a shock to the system. Um, I think they're preparing, they're preparing us well, because it's what's going to happen on the street. The street may be some way off, but is Mark showing the right potential? I think he did really, really well. Uh, very fit lad. Great mannerism. Um, I think he'd do well in this game if he decided to get into it. 
So Mark's got off to a good start. It's his second day and he's on a surveillance exercise in Shrewsbury. The students have been split up and given targets to photograph. And they get a bonus point for snapping a rival team member. We've got the woman under the clock. What else was on our to-do list? The aim is to make them understand how someone spying on their principal would behave. Mark and his partner are doing well. They've photographed their targets, but there's one more thing to do. One of the instructors is going to be in WH Smith at 3.40 p.m. We need to go in and find out what magazine he's been reading while he's been in there. So, we're using our initiative and the instructor hasn't seen me or been introduced to me. So I'm literally going to stand next to him, take a picture of him reading it, buy the same magazine, hand it back to him at the end, and he won't have any idea. The target's in the shop. Mark's given the nod, and he goes in. Let's just hope we've got the name of the magazine right. It's over very quickly, but Mark will have to wait a while to find out how he got on. There's certainly more to this job than he first thought. Yeah, the public perceptions are always, always wrong uh, in this line of business because you, you, you go by what you see through the media and these mobile man mountains that work in the entertainment business, you know, we're really not about that. The predominance of our work is, is, is undertaken in threat and risk analysis, planning and reconnaissance. These are, these are very big factors that's totally unseen and that's where often the real work is done. Kevin Horak's firm runs this course. He's been in the business for 17 years and looked after a few famous people in his time. Well, everything you are now, everything you read on the news, uh, um, or you see on the news rather, is often driven by some form of security. Um, everywhere you look now, there is a, a feeling of security um, or lack of, and that's just the way that things are now. So it is a growth business, and this is the absolute top end of that growth business. So if Mark completed the full two-week course, he'd probably find work. But he needs to get the basics right. It's his last day, his final test, and he's going to find out it all comes down to numbers. A big part of a bodyguard's job is escorting their principal in public, and often that's just a short trip to and from a limo. Straightforward? Well, for some, it's not as simple as it seems. And you're facing this way. Outwards, 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 that's it. OK, back you go, guys, let's do that again. Do I think the again. scary thing is is that we're not in a pressure environment at this moment in time and people are getting it wrong. I mean, when, once you're in that pressure environment, it's going to be completely different and you've got to think on your toes. Is he for f***ing real? And if they're not getting it in an unpressured environment, what's it going to be like in a pressured environment? Back over here. <laughs> but practice makes perfect, and Mark's team do get the hang of things. Good, that was better. That was better. You could see that, guys, yes? Yeah. Absolutely spot on. So Mark's proved he can learn the drills, and he was pretty handy in the unarmed combat. So there's just one more thing to find out. How did he get on in the surveillance? You did very well. Um, you achieved the tasks that you were given. Uh, and the, the magazine one in the shop, as you said, was the most difficult one. And you personally, I thought, performed very well. So having, having you given me wonderful feedback, should I be giving up my day job right about now? Um, it's a possibility, but however, what I normally say uh, to certainly people within you, like yourself is uh, we could probably spend a little bit more time with you, coaching yeah. you a little bit through the skills. No, not a problem. I think you'd, you'd fit in just well. Wonderful. That's, no that's nice to know. New career, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. No Cheers, problem. Henry. I think it's a real compliment that they think that I'm good enough to be a bodyguard. For me, it leaves my options open, and it, I know that I can go into many different types of jobs if I feel the necessity to, so it's great. At the moment, I'm a PE teacher, but for the option to be a bodyguard, um, I might just consider it.